Now look, I've done telling you. I got, uh, I told you before, as you know, I got a, I got a book that I've been, the cold book here. Mm -hmm. to, anyway, but, but look, I was at, I've been reviewing some stuff the last couple of days since I saw you last. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things is that I did it when I was in New York, I did an interview uh, with uh, Professor James Snow. It was really quite interesting because he, one of the things he says is that, uh, let me see, how does he put it? Basically, uh, beings, well, he didn't say, I'm saying beings because I'm using, I'm doing the nearly fuller thing. Beings are, 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 are uh, when you, when you're on the planet, beings is like uh, the creator or, or God having a human experience. Now, how that translates? Let me just translate for you. I'll translate to Christianity. So the whole thing about uh, Jesus, which is actually the story of Horace, is that basically uh, Jesus, Horace, is on the earth having an earthly experience, though they're still divine. It's what's called African cosmetology. You know, so, so basically your job is to be a being and then you're supposed to go and have a human experience. So you're a divine being having a human experience. But to have it, now here's where we switch over to Daily Fuller. But Daily Fuller says, Daily Fuller Jr. who wrote the thing you can yeah, he, told you. Yeah. he says, well, there are no human beings on the planet because we don't pe treat people humanely. So the thing is, to be a human being, which means we have to be a being that's being humane. But because of the situation, that's not happening. Okay, so let me leave that alone for right now. I'm not Can you just hold this for me, buddy, buddy, just a second. I said, now we'll this real quick, because I made some notes, because I was at it was called a compendium. Academic was a compendium. Mm -hmm. That was a philosophical compendium of philosophy department. But here's the thing: they were in East London, and they had a video link up to uh, Alice, you know, here on the you know, you know, universe forehead. And what happened, though, is that you know, uh, uh, when they asked for questions, you know, East London, who had the most people, they didn't say nothing. So then the guy says, "Anybody from Alice?" And so. You know, you can't ask me any, um, in Alice, you can't ask me, so I had to ask a question. Okay, so I asked a thing, question about, basically my, uh, about racism and injustice and stuff like that. And, and the brother, who was he, he's a professor, professor, I think he's from the States, from a, like Connecticut, one of those Connecticut universities, something in New England University, because, you know, you, New England had a lot of universities, because, you know, with slavery, they, they got all endowed and stuff, and I don't know, they don't know where about that part. Professor Lewis Gordon. He's a brother. Nice guy. I like him. Didn't answer my question, I don't think. But, you know, he was not one of those things you can ask back and forth because a lot of people, you know, and I couldn't make it down to eat lunch for the dinner that they had so I could really, you know, grill them. Oh, I shouldn't say that. You know, talk to them like that. But anyway, so he went on and, and he didn't answer the question, but he's one of those people that's into Fanon. That was really interesting. His was, you see, Mr. Coley is sitting over there. Got Mr. Coley here. He says that one of the things that Fanon says, which is the same thing that Jewish Nairi said, is that this uh, first generation after liberation, if you will, or you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, they're still invested into the, basically the colonialist system. They're sort of weirdly, they're still attached somehow. It's not until the next generation, and we're talking about like the scholars' generation over there, it's not until his generation that you really can get your footing and get your liberation. That, that was pretty good. But the problem is, even with liberation, what's it going to look like? What's liberation going to look like? Now, one of the things I get from Neely Fuller Jr. is the definition of what well, liberation, but definition of justice. Now, when you have a liberation, you're supposed to have uh, justice. But here's the question. Nobody knows, like when I asked the good professor, Professor Lewis Gordon, well, what's justice? I didn't ask him what's justice, but he didn't really answer this. They just threw out words, justice. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> Think about it. What does, what everybody says, justice.
justice? What does it mean? Mm. Give a definition. Here's Nelly Fuller's definition. He says, justice is a, is, a, is a guarantee that no person, I'm going to say being, no person uh, is, is, is treated, is mistreated. I'm like, is mistreated. Then he goes on to say that also, let me see, the, the person who needs the most help won't, uh, it will, uh, Ms. Scully, you know, you, you, you heard him. What, what, what's the, 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 it's guaranteed that no person is mistreated and the person that needs the most help, what is it? Get the most constructive help. Gets the most constructive help. Now the key word in there, the most constructive help. You could be running around, somebody says, I need help. But if you, even if, they might just, for money to get some money, some, some, you know, something like that. So you want to give them constructive help. And he goes on to full, just further say that, well, it's like a, it's like a triage. You know, you get an accident, you want to get the person that needs the most help first, and then you want to give them the most, the best help you get, you see? So, I'm glad I got that straight now. So basically, what I'm going to wrap this whole thing up that I'm talking about right now, because I know it's so confusing, I jump all over the place as usual. But look, here's the thing. If we are persons or beings trying to be humane, the first thing to be humane is you got to have justice for everybody, so you give the most help to everybody. That's it. That's one of these dispatches from the uh, arts director Merce. That would be me, T, from the Palace and State Metrics to Bedlam. You know what I always suspect. Yeah.